I want to greet you this uh, afternoon in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Um, I have been asked by several brethren uh, to be teaching on what is known as eschatology. It's a big word, E-S-C-H-A T O L O G Y S K T O L O G Y E S H A T O L O G Y, which means the doctrine of future events, the teaching about the things that will happen in the future. I think this coronavirus has forced us, and it's a pity for me to say that we've been forced by the coronavirus to be doing this, but it has forced us to want to learn about what will happen in the future. Um, the future has to do with the second coming of Christ and so forth, I will mention those things. So we'll be having a series of about five or six teachings on this. Now the Bible says in the book of Hosea chapter four and verse 16, it says, my people perish because of lack of knowledge. That's Hosea four verse six. It says, let me read it. It says, my people are destroyed from lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge. I also reject you as my priests because you've ignored the law of your God. I also will ignore your children. But we want just to underline the first line, my people are destroyed for for lack of knowledge. If you read it in the King James Version, it says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. It says the same thing in the Amplified, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So uh, people are destroyed because they lack, they lack knowledge. Now the problem when you lack knowledge is that you become gullible by being Gullible, I mean, you just believe everything that you are being taught. Because you don't know the truth, you cannot differentiate between, between the truth and lies. So whatever it is being taught, then you receive it. It's important, therefore, for us to really be uh, literate people, people who are taught as far as the scriptures are concerned, we must be biblically literate. Uh, concerning, concerning this matter of people not knowing the scriptures, uh, the Bible tells us that the teachers of the law came to Christ, the Sadducees. They were asking about the resurrection, which has to do with what I call eschatology, future, future events. So they come to him with a fictitious story of a man, of a woman who was married to seven, seven brothers, serially, one after the other. And then uh, they asked the question, they, they said, now when the resurrection come, to which of these seven brothers that this woman got married to, will she be a wife to? Then Christ says in Matthew 22, Matthew chapter 22 and verse 29, it's a very significant scripture. Uh, but Jesus replied to them, you are wrong because you know neither the scriptures nor the power of God. In the NIV says, you are in, you are in error because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God. When you don't know the scriptures, you will be in error. And therefore it is critical for us 
to know the scriptures. Now, today I will just give you the broad overview of things. Uh, the broad overview of things, and then later on, I will deal with uh, five topics, which I will, uh, six topics, which I will uh, give to you. This series will take seven, seven days. It will be seven series. Please uh, follow them. Now, number one, the Bible teaches about the fact that Christ is coming. We use the word Advent. Advent means the coming. So the advent of Christ. Now, the first thing I want to teach you is that there are three advents of Christ. There are three different times at which Christ came. Where did he come from? He came from heaven. We know that his home is heaven. And there are three occasions when Christ left heaven and he came to the earth. The first advent is when he came as a lamb of God to come and die uh, for our sins. That was the first advent. When he came to the earth and he dwelled on the earth. And this is found in many, many scriptures. In Matthew chapter 1, it talks about him coming. Verse 23, uh, I think, the virgin will be with a child and will give birth to a son. They will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. So this is a prediction of his first advent, something that was predicted by Isaiah, when he predicted that a girl who was not married will become pregnant and give birth to a son, uh, he shall be called Emmanuel, which means God is with us. So Christ came then uh, as a baby, or as a lamb of God, uh, to, uh, to, to come and, and grow here on earth uh, to set an example for us and then to die on the cross. Then another uh, scripture that talks about his coming elaborately so is John chapter 1 verses 1 to 14. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was in the beginning. He was with God in the beginning. Then it goes on then uh, to talk about him uh, coming. And verse 14, it says, The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son of God who came from the Father full of grace and truth. So there's the first advent when Christ came to die a sacrificial death on the cross for our sins. The second advent is when Christ comes for the church. It's called rapture, R-A-P-H-U-R-E, rapture, R-A-P-H-U-R-E, rapture. When he comes to take the church to himself. We'll be teaching elaborately on that. Well, that is the second advent coming for the church. The proposition is for, is Christ coming for the church? It's found in many scriptures, but particularly in First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. That is the second second um, a coming of Christ. And then the third coming of Christ is when he's coming with the saints, when he's coming to reign on earth 
for a period of a thousand years is called the millennial reign of Christ. Millennial, M-I-L-E-N-N-I-A-L, -N -N millennial reign of Christ. Millennium means a thousand when Christ will come and reign here on earth for a thousand years. This is found in many scriptures. I think it is found in Matthew 30, 25. Matthew 25, maybe verse 31, if I'm not mistaken. When uh, verse 31 is, when the Son of Man comes in his glory, that's when he comes to, and all the angels with him, he will sit on his throne in heavenly glory. That's when he's going to come. Okay. Uh, that is Matthew 25, 31. It's when he's coming now in his glory. And he's coming with his angels. And he's coming with us. First uh, Thessalonians uh, chapter uh, 4 talks about the fact that he will come with us and then um, uh, to come and reign here on earth. Uh, so we've talked about three comings of Christ. One, he, is, he came as a lamb of God to come and die for our sins. That, that was the first coming. The second coming, is when he's coming for the church. And then the third coming is when he's coming with the church to come and reign here on earth for a thousand years. Did you get it? How many times is Christ coming? He's coming three times, isn't it? How many times does the Bible speak of the coming of Christ? Three times. When he came to die for our sins and he lived for for 33 and a half years on earth, then he went back to heaven. That was the first coming. When he's coming for the church uh, to come and take us to himself, it's called the rapture. Uh, that's the second coming. The third coming is when he's coming with the church to come and rule and reign here on earth for a thousand years. Now, what are the scriptures that speak about the coming of Christ? What are the scriptures that talk about the coming of Christ? There are several, but I'll give you just a few of them. But there are several of them. Matthew chapter 24. Uh, Matthew chapter 24 uh, talks about things that will happen before Christ comes. Matthew chapter 24. What precipitated this discussion is that they were walking, the disciples of Christ were walking with him, uh, and they came, uh, they saw the building that Herod had built. It was a beautiful, magnificent, magnificent building. Matthew 24 one says, Jesus left the temple and was walking away when his disciples came up to him to call his attention to, his, uh, to this building. They were impressed by this building and they called his attention to it because it was impressive. Um, um, Matthew 13 one says, as he was leaving the temple, one of his disciples uh, said to him, look teacher, what mass massive stones, what magnificent buildings. The way in place was beautiful. Uh, Herod uh, built it in order to please the Jews. And they spent a lot of money. I forget how many years it took to build, to build it. So the, uh, the disciples of Christ were impressed with this building. So they said to him, just look, he says, as he was leaving the temple, one of his disciples, the name is not mentioned, said to him, look, teacher, what a massive, uh, massive stones, what a magnificent building. They were impressed with it. 
So Matthew chapter 24 then talks about it. Then he says, do you see all these things he asked? I tell you the truth, not one stone there here will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. You are saying this building that you see will be destroyed. Uh, as Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen? And what will be the sign of his coming and the end of the age? That's a very good question, isn't it? When will these things happen? What will be the sign of your coming? And what will be the, be the sign of the end of the age? Good question, isn't it? And then Christ begins then to tell them of the things that will happen. Watch out that no one deceives you. This is, I'm bothered because many people are saying a lot of things that are not scriptural. And because you don't know the scriptures, you are frightened and you are, you, you are believing everything. You are being deceived. You need to read the scriptures to know these things. Uh, watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name claiming I am the Christ and they will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Don't be alarmed when these things happen. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. These are what we call precursors. A precursor is something that comes before something else. So these are the precursors of his coming, the things that will precede his coming. He says, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Have we not seen this? Uh, all over the world, uh, nations rising up against nation. There'll be famine. There will be earthquakes in various places. And all these are the beginning of birth pains. When you see these things happening, you know that his second coming is close by. And we've seen wars, we've seen famine uh, all over uh, the world. Millions of people are in starvation. Uh, there are earthquakes all over the place. There are tsunamis. Uh, I don't want to read the whole thing. And then another scripture that talks about the second coming of Christ is Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17. The Matthew one is one is Matthew 24, 1 to 35. Matthew 24, 1 to 35. And Luke 17 from verse 20 also talks about it from verse 20. Um, it talks about the second coming of Christ. Is it from verse 20? Or is it now? It's even before verse 20 in Luke chapter. Uh, in Luke chapter, it begins from verse 1, actually. Is the repetition, uh, Luke chapter 17, hold on. Luke chapter 17. I think it's verse 20, I'm sorry, please pardon me. In verse 20 says, Once having been asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come. So they also want to know when is the kingdom of God coming? Some of them were thinking of an earthly kingdom of God. They were not thinking of uh, the spiritual kingdom of God, Christ. They were thinking of Christ coming to rule here on earth uh, during their days. When is the kingdom of God coming? The kingdom of God does not come with your careful observation. Uh, nor will people say, here is it, or there it is, because the kingdom of God is within you. It is in your heart. You remember I said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is in your hearts. 
that there is an earthly kingdom of God that is coming though. Then he said to his disciples, the time is coming when you long to see one of the days of the Son of Man, but will not see it. Man will tell you, there he is, or here he is. Do not go running off after them. For the Son of Man in his day will be like a lightning. You see, now he's going to come like a lightning. He's going to come like the lightning, which flashes and lights up the skies from one end to the other. What does Christ mean here? He says everybody will see, will see him. When the lightning lights up the skies, everybody sees it. So he says it's going to come like a lightning that lights up the sky from one end to the other. But first he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. Just as it was in the days of Noah, and also will it be in the days of the Son of Man. What he's saying is that uh, what will happen when Jesus Christ is coming back will be what happened in the days of Noah. Please get that. Just as it was in the days of Noah, so also will it be in the days of the Son of Man. People were eating, they were drinking, they were marrying, they were being given in marriage up to the day Noah enters the ark. Then the flood came and destroyed them all. What Christ is saying is that people will be having a good time. They will not be uh, uh, waiting for the second coming of Christ. Uh, they'll be enjoying themselves, they'll be eating, they'll be drinking, they'll be getting married, they'll be will be given to marriage. It was the same in the days of Lot. People were eating, they were drinking, they were buying, they were selling, they were planting, and they were building. But the day of Lot left Sodom. But the day Lot left Sodom, fire and sulfur rained down from heaven and destroyed them all. Let me use one uh, word. The second coming of Christ will be unexpected. He will come unexpectedly. That is Luke uh, chapter uh, 17 verses 20 to 37. Let me give you other scriptures and I will not comment about them. I'm just giving them to you so that you can be reading them in this lock lockdown. Uh, First Thessalonians chapter, chapter uh, 13 to 18, First Thessalonians chapter, uh, chapter 4, First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. Then another one is Second Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians, uh, chapters, chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. Second Thessalonians, chapter 2, 1 to 12. And then the next one is First Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 to 4. First Timothy 4, 1 to 4. And then another one is Second Timothy, Second Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 to 9. Second Timothy 3, 1 to 9. And then there's this is First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. And then there is Mark 13, 1 to 31. Mark 13, 1 to 31. And then there is Second Peter, uh, chapter 3, 1 to 14. Second Peter. Uh, chapter 3, verses 1 to 14. And then the last one is uh, Matthew 25. The story of the 10 virgins is talking about the second coming of Christ. 
the store of the talents again talks of the second coming of Christ. Uh, so if you read from verses one to verse 30, 30, it talks about that, but verses that speak specifically now, specific, specifically about the second coming of Christ is Matthew 25 verses 31 to the end of the chapter to, to 46. Matthew 25 verses 31 to 46. These are the key scriptures. Obviously the book of Revelation, almost all of it talks about the second coming of Christ and other things that will happen in the future. Um, the book of uh, Daniel chapter seven and other parts of Daniel talk about the, uh, uh, the things that will happen in the future. Now, let me mention then the sequence of things. Oh, I hope you are, you are understanding. I hope the Lord is helping you to understand because what we're talking about now are deep things is what we call the meat of the word of God. It is not the milk of the word of God. We're talking about the meat of the word of God. Now, we're not talking about the future now we are dealing with six things. Listen to me carefully, six things, six things. What we're waiting for is the second coming of Christ, is the, is the rapture. That's what we're waiting for. Because the first coming has already taken place. Christ came and he was born, he grew up, he preached, he taught, he died. He rose from the dead. He spoke to his disciples. He went back to heaven and he sent the Holy Spirit to come and take his place. That was the first coming. But now we're waiting for the second coming and we will begin there when we study. We will study the scriptures that talk about his second coming. I'm not sure whether time will allow me today. If it does, we will begin and then we will uh, push until we've done the study. So we're waiting for the rapture when Christ will come and take to himself those who are born again. That second coming of Christ is coming exclusively for the church. He's coming exclusively for those who belong to him. We will see the things that will take place when he comes. So that's the first thing then. We're talking about six things, is that all right? The rapture. Uh, and then the second thing that we'll talk about is the tribulation period. The tribulation period. Now, people now make a big mistake. There's what we call pre tribulation, which means Christ will come before the tribulation. Pre means before tribulation. And then there is the, uh, a view that Christ is going to come after the tribulation is known as the post tribulation. But when you read the scriptures very carefully, uh, it is clear that Christ will come before the tribulation period. It's very clear, we're going to see it. And the tribulation period is going to last for seven years. But before the tribulation takes place, the, ch the church will be raptured. The church will be raptured. The church will be taken away. And then the tribulation will be triggered. The tribulation then will take place. The Antichrist there will be a trinity that will be operating during the tribulation period, just as there is a, a trinity that is operating right now. The, tri the trinity that's that is operating right now is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. 
it is that trinity that is operating but when the church is taken away and the bible says the holy spirit will be withdrawn and that is why the man of, of sin will then be released because the bible says there is something someone who is restraining him from being from being revealed now the trinity that will take place during the tribulation period it will be satan it will be the antichrist it will be the beast please let me repeat again the trinity that will be operational during the tribulation period will be satan it will be the antichrist and the beast let me allay your fears if you are a child of god all these things that they're talking about they're talking about uh, the sign of the beast which is 666 which will be put on the foreheads of people it will be put is it on their hands and that they'll be not they will not be allowed to buy unless they sh show the sign of the beast you won't be here why are you worried about it because you won't be on earth. You will have been raptured. You will, you will, you will have been taken away uh, from this planet when that takes place. But we'll speak about the tribulation period in details uh, when we continue with these teachings. And then the fourth topic in sequence, Christ is, comes, is the rapture. Then it is the tribulation period then it is the millennial reign of Christ. The millennial reign of Christ. Christ will literally rule on earth for a thousand years. He will rule on earth for a thousand years. This is found in Revelation chapter 20. We are not start studying it in details. And I saw an angel coming down out of heaven, having the keys to the abyss and holding in his hand a great chain. He seized the dragon, the ancient serpent, the Satan, who is the devil or Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. He threw him into the abyss and locked and sealed it over him to keep him from deceiving the nations anymore until the thousand years were ended. And after that, he must be set free for a short while. We'll be studying this when we come to that. Then it talks about then, uh, uh, from verse seven downwards, talks of Christ reigning. Now Christ will be ruling literally, literally, literally. Uh, there will never be a king like him because all kings are kings of regions and, and countries. Uh, the king of Britain, of the UK, the British monarchy, the Spanish monarchy, uh, the uh, kingdom of the Swazis and so forth. But Christ will have a universal dominion. There'll be one king on earth. We won't be having 101 kings. There'll be one king, and that will be Christ, literally, literally ruling on earth for a thousand years. We'll talk about it, the millennial reign of Christ on earth. Then what will follow will be the judgments to come uh, after the millennial reign of Christ then um, there will come the judgment, uh, the white throne judgment uh, will come and other judgments. We'll talk about the judgments. Um, then after the judgments, uh, eternity will be ushered in after the judgments and then people will be, will be assigned a place where they will spend eternity, in which they will spend eternity, uh, either in heaven or in hell. 
but uh, uh, eternity will begin. So these are the things that we'll be talking about. Let me then just uh, begin now without a lot of elaboration. Uh, give you scriptures that simply say Christ is coming back. And then we will then begin next week and talk about the rapture. But let me give you several scriptures that say Christ is coming back. Now these scriptures, some will refer to the to the first phase of Christ coming, when he's coming for the church. That's the first phase, the rapture. And others will be referring to the second phase of his coming, which is the millennial reign when he comes to rule on earth for a thousand years. So uh, it's when you take all the scriptures together that you know which one refers to what. Um, let's read, uh, for an example, John chapter 14, a scripture that you know very well. This one is re referring to the first phase, the, 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 the rapture of the church. Uh, I'm talking about, uh, I'm referring to John chapter 14. Is that right? John chapter 14. It's referring to the rapture, the first phase of Christ's second coming. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. That's John 14 verse 1. Don't let your heart be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. Verse 2. In my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. Then verse 3. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back. Underline those words, it's coming back. If I go and prepare a place for you, what will I do? I will come back and take you. That's the rapture. I will come back and take you so that you'll be with me, so that I will take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. That's the rapture. When Christ is coming for the saints, when he's coming for believers, uh, I really am persuaded that he'll be coming for disciples, for people who are committed Christians. Because we were saying this to disciples, it was it was to disciples who were saying this. Uh, I'm going to prepare a place for you. I will go. I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. So Christ is coming back. Uh, that's the that's the rapture. That is the rapture. Another scripture that refers to the rapture is 1 Thessalonians, which we'll study in details next time, next week, Lord willing. Chapter 4. Um, uh, uh, 1 Thessalonians, chapter 4. Uh, let's begin. When we study, it will begin from verse 13. But I want us to read verse 16, for the Lord himself will come down from heaven. From the Lord God will come down from heaven with a loud command. That's verse 16, 1 Thessalonians 4, 16. With the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God uh, will sound and the dead in Christ, in Christ will rise first. So he's going to come back and he's coming back for us. Uh, there are many other scriptures that we could refer to when we talk about the first phase of his coming. And then there is the second phase of his coming. Um, 
when he's now not coming for the church, which is the rapture, but when he's coming with the church, when he's coming to rule and reign on earth for a thousand years. Now the first scripture is Revelation chapter 1 verse 7. He says, Behold, now everyone will see when he comes back, but when he comes for the saints, not everyone will see him. We'll talk about it. Please, we'll talk about it. But this one, when he comes now to rule, says, Behold, he cometh through the clouds, and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him, even those who killed him will see him. And all kindred on earth shall wail because of him. Let me read it in NIV. He says, look, he's coming with the clouds and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him and all the people of the earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be, amen. So he's going to come and people will be frightened uh, they'll be frightened uh, if you read this verse in uh, the Amplified. It says, Behold, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all the tribes of the earth shall gaze upon him and beat their breasts and mourn and lament over him. Even so, it must be. Amen. So that's the second coming. When he comes now with his church to come and rule and reign on earth, everyone will see him. And some will uh, be terrified uh, because he's coming to judge them. It's when that look, a uh, scripture that we read, uh, comes into play uh, when he says when he comes it will be like a lightning from one side of the sky to the other do you remember we read the scripture like that and he says when he comes it will be like a lightning from one side of the sky to the other so everyone will see him uh, it is luke 17 24 for the son of man in his day in his day, when he's coming to rule and reign on earth for a thousand years, in his day will be like a lightning, which flashes and lights up the sky from one end to the other. He, he will be seen by everybody when he comes to reign on earth. Let me end up with Acts chapter 1. Let me just end up with Acts chapter 1, and then we'll be starting now these things, the rapture, the tribulation period, uh, the uh, millennial reign of Christ, the judgments, the judgments, and then the ushering of eternity. We'll study all those in details. But Acts chapter 1, uh, speaks of Christ just before he ascended to heaven. Uh, you read from chapter 1, uh, Acts chapter 1, uh, from verse 3, it says, After his suffering, he showed himself to these men, and he gave them convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days, these are the 40 days before he was taken to heaven, and then 10 days later, then the day, the day of Pentecost came. 40 days and spoke, and he spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift of my father, which my father promised to you. Uh, and then he talked and he talked 
And then verse 7 says, So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? They're asking, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? And then he says, no, 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 no. Uh, I'm not talking about that. That thing is in the hands of the Father. And then verse 10, he says, after he said these things, was taken up to before them, before their eyes, and a cloud too hid him from their sight. That's when he went back to heaven. And then verse 10 says, they were looking up intently, uh, they were looking uh, intently up in the sky, and he were, uh, they saw him as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside him. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? The same Jesus who has been taken from you to heaven will come back. Please underline those words. Why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. So Christ is coming back and then we will be talking about it elaborately next week. Let me pause here, give an opportunity to listen and for you to make comments and to ask questions. May the Lord bless you. Amen.